put them side by side so that is the difference and look how pale this is now compared to the other one on the left and that's only a matter of two weeks hello there my name is Liz a self-confessed succulent addict welcome to my channel growing succulents Ionium pink witch would have to be my most favorite Ionium, especially if they are grown as a cluster like this. This pot looks like it's just grown from one plant. Well, originally all of them came from one plant and I took some cuttings and grew them all on the stem inside there. So you can see that that's one stem here. This is a separate stem. This one, are you attached? No, this one's a separate. That one's attached. And that one is separate. So I think there's about five or six that I've taken off the mother plant. And the mother plant is producing lots of babies. Look at that. And also, this is what I've discovered. This Ionian pink, which has only been growing in here for the last couple of weeks. I had this growing in my 50% UV shade cloth area and the color was just phenomenal. It was just so beautiful. It is now the last three weeks of summer here in Australia. And so I thought since we're getting a lot more hotter days or warm days or high temperature, which the Ionium doesn't like, I decided to put it here in this area here where it's only getting partial sun. And what happened? The colors faded. So I'm just gonna put them side by side. So that is the difference and look how pale this is now compared to the other one on the left. And that's only a matter of two weeks. So now I believe that Ionium or the pink witch specifically needs to be grown in a much brighter area for it to color up. So this pink witch here as well, this was almost the same color as that medusa over there at the back and then of course i put it here as well and two weeks later it started going pale i had this plant for five months and there i started with 12 and now it has more than double its amount in five months time so it's very fast growing autumn winter and spring the best time to take cuttings because that is their growing period except in areas where you get frost you have to put it away and not have it exposed to the element during winter so now I would like to double its size again and so I am going to take some cuttings but before I do that I better clean it up because there is a lot of dry leaves in there and I can't see the little babies so clean it up first long tweezer is always handy for cleaning up I tried growing this plant from leaves and all it did was dry up on me so the leaves is quite thin so it can't hold moisture to keep the new growth fed so it dried up before it can shoot off new babies because I can't see what's behind it's better to clean it up first or else I'll be chop chopping something that I'm not supposed to chop 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 now in I've now finished cleaning my pink witch and she is looking absolutely gorgeous look at that so beautiful nice and clean so now before we start chopping her off i'd like to show you first the soil mix that i'll be using for my ionium one of the good thing i like about ionium is that it can handle water and very rarely do i get root rotting from any of my ioniums of course except when they're freshly cut yeah. So, so this is my succulent soil mix for my Ionium. So first I've got one part potting mix, half a mount of coconut coir. This is vermiculite which is loved by water loving succulents because Ionium do like water so I can't keep it dry. A quarter of pumice. 
I'm using a fine grit of my granite and a 10 10 10 NPK fertilizer. I also like to give it a little bit of my Seamongous for good luck. Now we mix this all up. You want to mix here? Come here, baby pea. Look here. Mix this one. My budgie wants to join in the fun as well. You like that? Oh, hang on. Sorry, you can't have the fertilizer. You're going to get sick. <laughs> All the other ingredients you can. So anyway, this is what I'll come up with or we should come up with. So also, the pot I'm going to be using is this pot from Kmart that I got very, very cheaply. And it's got a hole but quite small. So Ionium doesn't need to have big hole pots. You can use pots that's got small hole as well. Anyway, now let's start cutting up and potting up. No, Pedro, you can't eat that one. See, he wants to get involved now. I'll get you some grits, okay? I normally have this grit soil. Ah, don't eat that. <laughs> You're gonna die, baby P. You're gonna get sick. Now I got my pot ready and what I like to use for my Ionium, of course, I need to put a little mesh there to stop the soil from going out, but to stop it more from going out, I put some coconut husk. Now I'm ready to take cuttings of this Ionium, but first I need some plant cutting powder. I also tried using a liquid one and I find I did not see any difference between the growth because half of this Ionium here I actually dip in the powder and also the other half I dipped in the liquid one and to me I can't even tell the difference of the growth so these ones are probably bigger you'd say because out it's out in the sun or that one is smaller because out in the back so I think that's the only difference because this one here is also quite large but it's still attached to the plant so you can use the powder or the liquid it doesn't really matter so since I'm going to be using the powder what I like to do is take just a little bit put it in my little container here now I've already sterilized my cicatrices or kata now I have a box that I drilled some holes in it and of course I'm just going to show you container at the back just so the powder doesn't get all over the kitchen bench or my tablecloth so now we're gonna take some cuttings so first of all I would like to take this ones here so because I have these two and all these babies are growing at the back there so I would really like to remove the back part here so this one is quite large already and also I'm gonna leave the stem well these two were cuttings five months ago and now I'm gonna be taking cuttings on that one because in three weeks time it's going to be autumn here in Australia and the weather's gonna cool down so anyway I'm just gonna go proceed and chop this off now I'm gonna take this one first off and I'm gonna chop 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 so I'm leaving like about an inch and a half on the stem but the leaves there I'm just gonna leave that and you notice the black stem or black part of the stem that is where I like to cut so say for example this is sort of still a little bit green and that's the reason why I can't take cuttings of that one because that's gonna have a high chance of dying on me but before I kept talking and getting ahead of myself I'm gonna dip this in the powder just to seal it off there you go and then put it in the box that I prepared earlier now the next one I'm gonna be chop 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 is this one okay that one I could probably leave and I might need because I'm removing this one anyway but I really need to remove this one triple head now triple head also have a stem but I don't want to cut it too short so that's enough this is about an inch so this is already a cutting I've taken before so I chop off one of the plants there before and that thing just three heads grew out of it 
So now I'm going to dip it here and put it in my box. There you go, you go there. And then next, okay, all those ones at the back now that's quite pale. So these ones are quite pale. So even those ones, I'm going to leave them. And also, maybe remove one of them here so that way those ones in the back can actually breathe. That one has got a brown node, sorry, but you got to go. That way I can expose those other ones there. So now when this grows, so by springtime I'm sure this one, this plant, which is going to look bare for a while, is going to be lush again like this one at the front. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and chop, chop, chop. Okay, now she lost all its beauty. It's still beautiful. It's a bit like a woman having a haircut and then crying about it later on because she cut it too short. But look at that. <laughs> but this one, in a few months time, I have no doubt that is going to be beautiful again. Now I'm ready to plant up these other ones. Let's begin. Look at all my pretties here. So I've got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's some small ones and some big ones. So I'm going to start with the ones with the longest stem, which is this one, two. They're about the same size. So, okay, let's go plant this up. So my soil mix as well is quite, it sort of looks moist. So this is the beauty of Aeonium. If you dip it in the rooting compound or the rooting powder, you don't need or it doesn't need to be dried off. There you go. A one, two, three. Okay. Now, I'm going to put, oh my goodness, that is so pretty. I am putting, okay, there you go. There you go, that's it, and one more. Excellent. And now, doesn't that look pretty? It's so beautiful. It's like a beautiful rose, a <laughs> pink witch rose. Gorgeous. Okay, so that's it. So now I'm going to leave this. I can actually take this outside or it's not that I can, but I will be taking this outside, putting it back where my protected area was. That's where it's going to stay. And I'm going to leave this for about one week before I water it. So water it as normal as to my heart's content. And that's all I've got for this video. Isn't that beautiful? But then now... Instead of just having one beautiful pot of Ionium, now I have two beautiful pot of Ionium, plus these ones I'm also putting in another pot. That's all I've got for you for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.